Hello, Brandon Lewis here of Embedded Computing Design, and this is the day before CES 2017, and actually I'm at the Gold Lot, which last year was just a parking lot. This year, it's full of Vito X demos, and I'm sitting here with Franz Chimbom, correct? Yeah. Uh, of uh, Vito X company Savari, and he's going to take us on a little tour of some of the latest developments that are happening uh, with that exciting technology. Uh, let's take it away. What are we going to see here, Franz? So what we're going to showcase um, to you today is uh, V2X technology. V standing for Vehicle X for everything, so vehicle to everything communication based on the long-range Wi-Fi, which is one of the sensors that goes into highly automated and self-driving vehicles. Mm -hmm. has three components, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and vehicle to pedestrian. The mm -hmm. first application we're going to showcase now is vehicle to infrastructure. We set up a... Um, traffic light up there in front, what you can see on the applications is exactly the time that is remaining um, on the green light, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now you see seven seconds, six, five seconds left, the green light is on. The first thing we're going to show is a red light violation warning. The system senses, red light is coming up, it's on, we see it's orange, one second to red light, and it gives you a warning. Great. Okay? So this is um, something that is certainly focused on, on safety. If you think on the wider on the wider side, um, it's also serves the purpose of uh, efficiency. Um, if we have an automated transportation system, definitely. In that case, we're not going to have to worry about um, potentially big trucks stopped in traffic polluting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's the case. Now the second one is a bit more. Uh, interesting and uh, builds actually on just the, the topic we discussed of efficiency. Um, we will um, showcase you something that's called um, recommended speed. Recommended speed uh, on the green light. So uh, we'll go at a certain speed. The app tells us if we continue at a certain speed, we will make it just in time through the green light. So now you see it's still red light. Same speed. Seven seconds, five seconds left. Same speed. Uh, can and we, we reduce the speed the exactly. same? And we can make it now on a green, on a green light, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> and as we got the warning before, now mm -hmm. we didn't because we just had the right um, speed. Great. Um, to make it okay. Uh, Uber efficiency. Stage yeah. stage for pedestrian. So this was now vehicle to infrastructure application that we are showing casing now. Mm -hmm. Now we're taking a pedestrian that has a phone in his hands uh, equipped with our technology and um, in the driver or potentially in the future than the car mm -hmm. as well as the pedestrian gets a warning um, that an imminent collision is ahead. And the pedestrian would get that in, that technology via, via an app, correct? Exactly, exactly, right. yeah. Great. That's how it's happening now. On this project, we worked together with the U.S. Department um, of Transportation to develop it for the past, I would say, one and a half to two years. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as advanced um, from a commercialization perspective than V2V or V2I technology. Mm -hmm. So it will quite take some time to see this action then widely deploy on roads, but it's uh, we are able to do it okay. today. Let's do that. Uh, go ahead, Virana. Watch for pedestrian on left. Watch for pedestrian on left. Exactly, exactly. Now, what is certainly um, interesting here is you say, okay, but there might be, let's say, downtown Manhattan or Shanghai, many, many pedestrians, <laughs> right. many cars and so on, and you, the car is getting um, information um, from multiple objects mm -hmm. in one second. How are we um, making sense out of it? We mm -hmm. actually have extensive IP um, on the filtering side, so we can filter out those um, who are an imminent threat mm -hmm. and uh, filter out all the noise that is happening around. Yeah, great. Yeah. See, one of the benefits of this technology is the fact that outside of s camera based sensors or LiDAR or radar, yeah. we're actually predicting or seeing into the future a little bit rather than being reactive. Exactly, that's absolutely right. Um, that is one of the advances that we can be predictive in the analytics we're doing. The second one is that. Um, um, we don't require um, to be in the line of sight. So mm. we can actually see around corners with this technology. And the third advantage is to have a range of up to one kilometer. Oh, wow. um, so um, this means we can sense everything that is around in that range, not necessarily that we are acting up on it, as you mm -hmm. just explained. Okay, Correct. we'll do the V2V. Uh, yeah. So with college you want Go ahead, we're on a five miles per hour. Go ahead. Yeah. So now we're going to show something that's called FCW, Forward Collision Warning. 
um, this is something you would necessarily get as well with cameras or lighters and so on. But here we're showing it with, with, um, with our kind of technology. Wow. Um, <laughs> oh, scary there. I saw you being scared. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to our technology, <laughs> right. the first day is not your last day. Right. <laughs> Now? I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, now it's something that is very interesting actually. Gets me personally. Yeah, go ahead, um, Virana. Go ahead. Very excited. Um, it, it's intersection movement assist. Right. Now we did the around the corner technology, right? Yeah. Okay, Think of this working perfectly in an obstructed, an obstructed yeah. view. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Virana, blind spot. If you can come to the side. And everybody who's watching, you can tell why they needed to use the gold lot this year. <laughs> Alright, now we're doing let's go. Now we're doing blind spot detection. Yeah, blind spot detection warning up. The first is blind spot, and the second is the lane change assist wall. Yeah. Great. Okay. See, I wasn't okay. scared that time. Yeah. <laughs> because you did not see the vehicle. Right. Yeah. Okay, Verana, we're gonna go to the work zone. Yeah. And now, actually, we're gonna go outside um, on the road again, where we set you up stay here, a, a work zone, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, typical on so many roads and causes congestion now with this system. Um, as it has lane level accuracy, it can tell us where the work zone is happening, divert traffic if needed, and uh, this is something we have been working also with the, with the US Department of Transportation. Is this our last demo today? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, Virana, <laughs> probably you can go back to the road go parking lot, yeah? Oh, yeah, we did. He can move that. No, I mean, he's. <laughs> He's uh, maybe he's more scared than he lets on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah. show him the what do you see infrastructure? Um, on that intersection now, uh, right next to uh, the Simon Says Convention Center. Um, I will point to the yeah. vehicle to it. Exactly. Up there, you see? It says Convention Center. And Oh yeah, that's one of your roadside units. Yeah, that's yes. the roadside unit. And uh, we deployed this on many intersections here in, in, in Las Vegas. And uh, we, we would be able one. to perform um, big to infrastructure mm -hmm. um, communication. Um, and there's another one right there. Um, now you see the W Hotel sign. That's where the oh, okay. is. You see yeah. the two, the two, the two, two antennas. antennas. Yeah. turn to our last set of uh, applications um, so really quickly yeah. friends um, how long do you think it is until we see some of this technology on the road yeah. I mean are we talking still space age type of stuff or you know I, I believe there was a mandate passed by the Obama administration yeah. late, uh, recently uh, that says 2019 2020 vehicles yeah, yeah Brent, you're absolutely right so um, with this mandate, um, it actually requires um, car companies to make a step forward, integrate this technology in their production vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect to see them on the roads in the 2019-2020 timeframe mm -hmm. in the US, um, as well as in Europe and in China. The mandate, however, is focused on the uh, US um, ground. Mm -hmm. All the other markets are, however, closely uh, watching what is going on in the US since um, it is seen kind of as a, as a thought and technology leader in that space. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is the yeah. Cadillac 2017 program already exactly. in the production. Exactly. So there is some cars already on the road starting from 2017. Um, we're talking about 50,000 um, vehicles. Um, this technology, however, to have the benefit that we aspire um, to get to reduce 80% of all um, traffic fatalities, there needs to be um, somewhat a denser um, penetration. Um, we expect to see that um, available next year already in some of the smart cities that are sponsored by the US Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. speaking of New York, speaking of Columbus, but also the same uh, maybe Shanghai, where density 
um, is given and we um, expect to uh, deploy this technology to about 10,000 plus cars in each of the cities. Wow. Yes, there, yes. Um, but um, the leap forward comes with the production um, cars. Yeah. And then for the Vita, um, for the roadside units, those can be deployed relatively quickly. Yeah, it, they can be deployed quickly, but however, it needs the leadership um, mm -hmm. from the city. Okay. Um, so it's, um, of course, however, it needs to be installed. Uh, maintenance um, is an issue, and all these um, processes come with cost, and so each city has different budgets mm -hmm. and different pace, of course, of moving forward. However, the U.S. is a great place um, for them to get installed. We see a lot of cities taking, taking advantage. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, so this is a work zone. You know, the beginning of the work zone is, is the two cones you see the, over there. And there is, after those two cones, there's another two cones that represent the beginning of a lane closure. Mm -hmm. So you expect to see three types of warning. The first one is an awareness that there's a work zone ahead. Once you are, you are inside the work zone and your speed is above the speed compliance or the speed limit, you will get another type of warning. And the third one, if you are driving in the lane that's closed ahead and you are about to intrude the lane, you will get another warning. Mm -hmm. So we'll experience all of that. Great. Here we are. The first Work zone ahead. Work, ahead. Work zone ahead. And the distance is clear. Distance is clear. Yeah. Perfect. Here we almost, almost zero distance. Yeah. And now start the speed limit. Lane closed, closed ahead. This is the beginning of it. And so this is what we also would categorize as vehicle to infrastructure communication mm -hmm. with the infrastructure piece that you saw mounted onto the traffic lights mm -hmm. also being um, here next to the road. Great. Yeah. So this is, this is, you know, we show you just uh, some of the applications. We, we have 25 applications running in that hardware. Yeah. We show you a few of them. Yeah. Uh, but we try to cover the three pillars, the vehicle to vehicle, the vehicle to infrastructure, and the vehicle to pedestrian. This is also my business card. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, as far as part technology partners, who are you working with right now to kind of move this entire B2B, B2X uh, technology forward? Yeah, so on the B2B side, um, we are working with uh, the chip reacted to him very yeah. quickly when he break hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chipset yeah. manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, NXP being one. Yeah. We're all soon to be Qualcomm. Uh, Autodocs, um, Qualcomm, of course, so we are chipset agnostic. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on the security side with a company called Security Innovation, Hi, how are based you? out of Israel. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are um, then working with SAIC in China. Um, as they are our distribution partner there. Mm -hmm. So we are building up a whole ecosystem of partnerships to be able to penetrate the market as fast as possible. So our idea is to build that network so that we can have access um, to markets on a global scale mm -hmm. while staying um, a startup um, based out of the US. Great. And do you think that this, is, this technology is going to be limited to DSRC or do you see applicability for other sorts of wireless uh, communications? Yeah, we see, we see that definitely that applicability um, coming into place. Um, we are the pioneer on the DSRC side, however, mm -hmm. uh, we expect there to be a convergence of uh, DSRC and cellular. So that's why we have been working also with uh, US carrier and car manufacturers to um, develop a proof of concept on that cellular technology, meaning also cars that have, don't have DSRC technology in it can receive those messages. Great. Now we fight the penetration problem and can have um, safer roads. Excellent. That's some good stuff, Franz. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Well, uh, Brandon Lewis here of Embedded Commuting Design. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. A uh, little couple beads of sweat, but we're all safe. Uh, have a good one.